Here is why I have a love-hate relationship with the learn table. This thing just has a ton of nice parts on it. From underneath the car, the gas tank, suspension, brakes, every single nut, bolt, bracket, exhaust hanger, all of it, everything is brand new. Do you think your Wu-Tang saw can defeat me? On guard. Off to a little bit of a rough start on this one. The tire's flat. The connector for the USB cable was actually under the seat, under the carpet, and then also under the car. So the seat had to come out, carpet had to come up, had to go from underneath, plug a cable in, extend it all around the world. Uh, but we're good to go now. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is pull the file out of it and see what we're working with. Downloading. This looks like a slightly modified wizard tune. Fuel tables pulling a bunch and adding a bunch. And based off of what the learn table is showing, uh, we're probably either going to run into an injector problem or a fuel pump problem. So that's kind of disappointing. Target air fuels needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but the numbers are decent. Probably got a little bit more timing in it than what it needs. And the primary reason that this is here, he's been driving this around for quite a while apparently, but uh, the idle is the main concern. And it looks like all the idle settings haven't been touched. All right, I'm gonna go sit at the table and make a new file. All right, loaded up, which should be a pretty decent starting point. I suspect I probably have too much IAC park position in it, so probably gonna have to come down on that. And since it looks like we're dealing with a fuel problem, I actually scaled the fuel table. I don't know if that'll focus or not. You can see that one cell's white. So essentially, uh, scaled this to where it's just flirting with maxing out the injector. And hopefully we can bring that down, but uh, I'd rather start overly rich than uh, lean. So, shot that into the ECU, cycled the key. Let's see if this ISC part is too much. Actually closer than I thought. I might even have to come up a touch. percent and a little more hold time. Let's see if this is any better. That's perfect. And take out a touch of fuel. All right, that's good. Now, um, have my injector end angle table zeroed out because I was going to build a custom table and I forgot to do that. So let me go set up the end angle before we get too crazy getting the fueling dialed in. And it's already about 150 degrees so we shouldn't have to let it warm up too much longer before we can start rolling it. Alright, I got a custom table for injector end angle. We're just using uh, Terminator XB2 software on this. And... I tried to keep the numbers in the fuel table somewhat similar-ish and then just completely like reshaped it. So I'm not sure if we're gonna be out in left field or not. So we're gonna let it warm up a touch and then do some part throttle stuff. Way better. When I started for the first time, it flared to like nine billion RPM when it was dropped off. It looks like we got some air temp enrichment going on. So what I usually do for the dyno it's a lot cooler out today than it has been lately, so uh, my spread here was a little bit off, but I usually set everything in like the current operating range to 100 while we're on the dyno, so it's not manipulating anything. And then we can go back and change that. Oh, it looks like the trans range position is uh, actually working on this. I wasn't expecting it to. It's warmed up enough now that closed loop is turned on and we're about 3%, so that's good. So I have the learn table turned off and I'm just going to manually adjust the fuel table as needed. Actually fairly close. 
house already. Just kind of rolled it a bit to see if it was in the ballpark. I don't like trying to get too precise with the changes that I'm making until I verify that, you know, it's not out in left field. Uh, but I think this is close enough to work with. It looks like right off of idle, it's gonna need the most work. So I'm gonna go ahead and part around with this and then we'll come back once we start ready, getting ready to do some full throttle stuff. close here it's going up and load like negative one negative two negative two negative two nice and smooth so far so good all right just set our trans up so I want downshift on us and started logging and we're just gonna make a little probably a little half run or something and see where we're at and I would feel comfortable just letting this truck leave here after that run. Uh, the fueling was spot on. That's awesome. I don't remember if this has a fuel pressure sensor on it. I'm curious to see what fuel pressure looks like. It made 411. Might have actually still kept going. I kind of lost track of where I was at RPM wise, so I just let out of it, but usually I don't run that high on the first run, but that one was real close the whole time. Graph looks great too. Now let me pull this log out of it. So here's our first run. Uh, you can watch here on the closed loop comp. This is uh, essentially our fueling and making sure our target air fuel and our air fuel match. But negative one, two, one, zero, negative one. This might be the closest I've gotten one on the very first run. Negative two. Negative one, one, zero, negative two, negative two, negative one, zero, two, one, one. That's uh, as about as close as you're ever really going to get. Uh, so happy with that. Turn that off, get it out of the way. Uh, I had mentioned at the start of this, looking at the learn table, I suspected there was either an ejector or a fuel pressure problem. So if you look at the purple line, turning on and off. Uh, you can see fuel pressure is dropping. That's about 58 uh, off the throttle just running and it drops all the way down to 48. So that's why we had such a large hump at the upper RPM. Uh, voltage looks good, temps look good, and uh, something else. Speed's working. What the hell else did I want to look at? Oh, duty cycle. Let's see, duty cycle gets up to right about 80. So our problem was fuel pressure, not injector. Who knows if the fuel gauge works correctly, but according to that, it's got plenty of fuel in it. It's a 12.5 air fuel. I guess we'll try and lean it out a touch. We'll probably try a little bit of timing and maybe move the injector end angle around a little bit. Uh, it's nice when they go smooth and you can get the fueling diet on quick because then you can spend time uh, playing with all of the other stuff. Again, this one came in basically just for idle issues, which seem to be kind of corrected now. So I'll spend more time on this on the road probably than I will on the dyno. And who knows, maybe I'll uh, load the original file back in this and then we can record uh, going over 
how we got the idol all straight uh, for a tune the trilogy. So if you're interested in learning more on how the whole process there works, you can check that out. So let's try, we'll try like a 1270 air fuel on this to see if it makes a difference. It probably won't. So just a little bit leaner on this run, not expecting much. It might back up a little bit just from uh, maybe revving it a little bit higher on this one. kind of goes to show why you got to test this stuff because you can try it on 10 different cars and on nine of them it doesn't make a difference but on the 10th one that was a pretty significant jump in power I don't really want to go any leaner than that so uh, I'll try a touch of timing on the next one and here's the two over lane you can see it pretty much picked up everywhere I think I'm going to add two degrees. As of right now, it has three degrees less timing in it, full throttle, than what it came in here with. So I'll just make a global change now. Uh, and then if it actually likes it, we'll see where it likes it and then uh, kind of move the timing around accordingly. All right. Let's see what happens. What's your guess? I'm thinking it's going to pick up six or seven. That was pretty close. It looked like it picked it all up just at the higher RPM. All right, save that log. Let's take a look. The brakes on this thing, even just to, to take it from drive to park, you feel like you need to use all your strength and two feet. When I brought it into the shop, I thought I was going to drive it through the wall. It's got really nice, I think, Willwood brakes all the way around, too. So I'm actually going to put the timing back where I had it. Uh, below like 5700 I'm gonna take one degree out where I'm currently at from 6,000 and above so it'll be one degree more so we're there and last thing I want to do is right, let's go more negative with our end angle save this as a new file now our injector duty cycle is really high so this theoretically shouldn't make much of a difference because the injectors pretty much just turned on the entire time uh, we'll give that one more shot and that might be about it for what we need to do on the dyno might have to give them a little trophy for the easiest dyno session I've had in the last two years upload this and try that change so we're gonna go back to where we were on the end angle we'll look that over and that way like so that might be the last run we need to make on the dyno it's actually taking me a little bit of time to get this on the dyno because every time I come to try to do it it rains and obviously wanted to be able to drive it around on the road and it's been raining off and on today so Of course, right when I get it off the dyno, I decide I'm going to drive it around, it starts raining again. So I guess that's going to be the end of this one.